Second Chronicles chapter 21. Now Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. Would be a, a, the typical burying place of a family. Today would be like a mausoleum. He was buried in the, in the same place. And Jehoram, his son, reigned in his stead. And he had brethren, and he had brethren the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah and Jehiel and Zechariah and Azariah and Michael and Shephatiah. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. Now, when Joram was risen up, yeah, I, verse three. And the father gave them great gifts of silver and of gold and of precious things with fenced cities in Judah, but the kingdom gave he to Joram, because he was the firstborn. Alright, so he takes the firstborn, which is which is proper and right, sets him on the king, he gives his other children silver, gold, precious things, he gives them uh, cities to rule over, uh, he's separating his sons for some reason against Joram, I don't know why, but now when Joram was risen up to the kingdom of his father, when he's when he's made king, he strengthened himself and slew all his brethren with the sword, and divers also of the princes of Israel. He becomes a murderer. So whatever reason, the father Jehoshaphat separates these boys, and the problem was was Jehoram. He goes and kills his his brothers, even though they're far away away from him. I don't believe there's ever recorded any kind of threat. And, and besides that, he says divers, which is uh, like odd sorts. The Bible says there will be earthquakes in divers places, places where there will never been earthquakes. Here he says divers of the princes of Israel. So he's killing his brothers and he's killing princes of Israel, selected few of them. It's a murder. And Jehoram was 32 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. That's not good. No king of Israel has done right. No king of Israel has ever gotten right. No king of Israel has it recorded that God was pleased, that they did what David had done. Every single king of Israel was right. And he follows them. Like as did the house of Ahab. For he had the daughter of Ahab, the wife, and that's very important note. The daughter of Ahab, the wife. He marries Ahab's daughter. Well, who was Ahab's wife? Jezebel. And this is very important as we get to the next few chapters to realize what's going on. Jezebel's daughter is now married to the Judah's king. And you want to talk about a bunch of mess. Jehoshaphat kept going to Israel and doing right. Or trying to do right, I should say. And he wasn't. God wasn't with that time. Well, now his son steps in and he does something even worse to Jehoshaphat. He marries into the family of Jezebel. And read what the Bible has to say about Jezebel, especially in Revelation. She's a wicked woman. The daughter of Ahab to wife, and he wrought that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord. Well, he married a wrong woman and does the same thing that Solomon did. So it teaches you, you you ought to marry the right woman. How be it? The Lord would not destroy the house of David, which means that God was had in his mind was thinking about destroying Judah had it not been for the covenant that he made with David had he not promised David Judah would have been wiped out off the map why for marrying Jezebel God's had it and it's only going to get worse as we're reading more and more into Chronicles getting ready to finish Chronicles in our daily night reading all the all the junk that's going on. So you realize if God's this angry right now, when we get to the end of Chronicles, how angry is God that He actually just destroys the city? 
How angry was he with Israel in 70 AD? He destroyed the city. And he wrought that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord. How be it that the Lord would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant that he made with David, and as he promised to give a light to him and to his sons forever. In his days the Edomites revolted under the dominion of Judah and made themselves a king. All right, now you're going to start seeing revolts. They're definitely turning on God. They're not doing right. So all these nations that they were putting to tribute, you know, they were getting money from, they were getting labor from, now they're going to start rebelling against Judah. They're not going to listen to Judah, and they're going to form their own governments. And now today in 2013, yes, Israel is a state, but how much power do they have? Very little because the United Nuts run them. The Middle East uh, is running them. America is running them through the Middle East because we want the fuel from Saudi Arabia and, and Kuwait and all that. And Jehoram went forth with his princes and all his chariots with him. And he rose up by night and smote the Edenites which compassed him, circled about. And the captains of the chariots. I mean, he's fighting because they're they're going against him. He's got war. He's got battle. There's no rest. All right, you think that's over with? So the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. All right? They don't go back. They don't go under the authority of Judah no more. The same time also did a Libna. Here's another one revolted. From under the hand, because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. The more and more he stepped away from God, the more and more he's losing control. And now that Edom is broken away, Libna looks up and says, Hey, if Edom can do it, so can we. So what's one of the first things you start seeing as, as the nation starts crumbling, as things start happening? You start seeing that whoever you're under, they start revoking. Listen, America, pretty much, Americans are a joke to the world. There was a time that uh, if you were to wrap a man in an American flag and sent them in the country, they wouldn't shoot. They wouldn't shoot them. You did that today, they would die laughing. America thinks she's got such big muscles and she doesn't. We don't even know who our own enemy is. And we open the door for them. And that which is not the enemy, God, we close the door on. Evil's good and good is evil. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah. Remember I said, the high places, get to God on your own. So what are all these pilgrimages that these religions have? Where do they get it from? Did you go to this mountain? Here's this guru. You get it out of a Bible. They tried that with Babel. They tried to build this big place that we're going to get to God. We're going to do it our own power, our own bricks, man-made. NASA tries it with, with their, with their uh, uh, spaceships and all that. We're going to go to Mars and we're going to find our God. I don't think so. One of these days you're going to look through a telescope and you're going to see this flashing light. It's going to be coming closer and closer and closer. And the Bible says man's going to hide in the rocks. Say rocks fall on us. Hide us from the God, Jesus Christ. And cause the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication. Now as we've been reading, now as we've jumped ahead, our daily reading now is going through what we're studying now. I'm telling you right now, I am seeing even tonight's reading that we read. I'm seeing America present 2013. The inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication. Our government is making children commit fornication. They go to school to get education, math, science, reading. And they, they come out thinking that we came from a big blob. They go to read about math. They go to learn about how to speak and how to how to uh, learn English. And they come out thinking that you know it's okay as long as you use a condom or any other protective device. 
You send them to go learn how to do things, and they come home, you know, it, it's a mistake and go get an abortion. These things are things that are being taught by the government through the public school system, and the public school system is not is not your state or your town. It's a federal system. Don't take your kids to school and find out who comes marching to your door. Fornication is sex before marriage. Fornicating is they're fornicating with other gods and not God, and they're literally fornicating, which is not allowed in the law. And compelled Judah there too. Not only this ain't do it and, and cause the inhabitants, they are compelling you. They want you, the government wants you to do wrong. And where are we today in America? The government wants you to do wrong. They'll reward you for doing wrong. And there came a writing to him from Elijah. Elijah? He's been out of he's been out of it for a long time. Amazing how Ahab's mentioned again, Jezebel's mentioned again, the daughter's mentioned, and boom, here's Elijah. This is the enemy of Jerusalem's wife. The daughter of the two wicked uh, king and queen in Israel. Um, yeah, in Israel. Jezebel wanted Elijah dead. Elijah killed her prophets. Thus saith the Lord God, the Lord God of David, thy father, because thou hast not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat, thy father, nor in the ways of Asa, king of Judah. Notice I don't put, you don't point out no Israel king, the ones of Judah. And God praises Jehoshaphat and and Asa. You know when when your children fail. Can God say, listen, even though they fail, Jehoshaphat, thy father, Asa, the, the, the king of Judah, they did right. They showed you the way. There is no excuse for Jehoram. I keep forgetting his name. Jehoram, there's no excuse God is saying. Your father is Jehoshaphat, your grandfather, Asa, they did right. Why are you doing this? But has walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Why? Why would he do that? He married the daughter. So you can't say, listen, we're learning in Second Chronicles 21. You cannot marry someone who's wicked, inspect your marriage, inspect your family, inspect everything to be hunky-dory. Even Paul warns about that. You're not the married the unsaved. God gives an illustration of two kings of Judah, Jehoshaphat and Asa, and he says, listen, you're walking in the ways of the king of Israel. That's a contrast. That's the book of Proverbs. You're not doing right, for he had married into the family. And Jehoshaphat's the one that kept running up there. That's why I kept telling you, Jehoshaphat should not have been there. You gotta watch your relations because what Jehoshaphat did ruined his son because his son went right back into the thing and married into that family. Had Jehoshaphat never involved himself in Israel, his son Jerome would never have gotten into that family and never would have sinned. And has made Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a whoring. Well, we saw a fornication, now here's whoredom. We are paying for something that you not ought to be doing. How do you, how do you reference this as a whoredom act? He's buying the worship of these gods. How do you do that? I can tell you right now. You give me 1995 and 495 for shipping hand, I'll send you this thing, and God will give you ten thousand dollars or a hanky, whatever it is. 
That's whoredom. That's someone trying to take your money so you can worship them and their money and their God. When you pay somebody so that you can have religious freedom or penance or whatever you want to call it, that you can get release of your sins, that's buying whoredom of a small G-O-D. Like to the whoredoms of the house of Ahab. Oh, you had 400 uh, prophets, 450 of them, that was under and taken care of by Jezebel. I mean, I don't know of any particular religion out there that's taken care of by the governments of the world, I wonder. Who will have a vow of chastity or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, get, get tax breaks and everything like that. And you get, you know, well, I don't know anybody like that. And then for everything they do, they'll charge you. Don't you be, don't you be thinking anything else. If you, if they want, if you want them to pray for you, they'll charge you. You go, you go, you want to burn a candle for whatever reason, you got to put a quarter in the slot. I've been through all that mess. You know, a Baptist preacher shouldn't charge you for a funeral. You put money in his hand when you shake his hand, but he shouldn't charge you. A Baptist preacher shouldn't charge you for... I'm talking about people in his own congregation. If the Lord ever gave me a pastor, I will never marry anybody who's not of the congregation, who's not a member of the church. Somebody's a member of my church who gets married, I'm not going to charge them. They put money in my hand in a handshake. Okay, that... I ain't going to charge them. You get somebody who charges you to do services, that's whoredom. And then they turn around and they put the marriage, they put the nice little girl there, they put the nice little guy there, and do you say to yourself before God and let man not put, you know, it's under blah, 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 and you give me the twenty two ninety five, and you just said this sacred thing before God, that God looks down and says, I did not honor that. And people think, oh, I've been under God married. No. I definitely believe 100% of a saved man, a saved woman, I mean, a saved man, unsaved woman, or a saved woman, unsaved man, get before God and marry and join together. God did not honor that at all, according to scriptures. And if you pay somebody to, to marry you to, that's whoredom. I've heard a preacher, thank you very much now, that will get you married just so you don't sleep together no more. That's whoredom. You get them married without sitting down and see if they're right for each other, which I won't get into that. Whoredom is when you pay for services for a G-O-D. That's whoredom. Like to the whoredoms of the house of Ahab, and also has slain thy brethren of, the, of thy father's house. Murder. Sounds like a church system to me that go out slaying people. Thy brethren, thy father's house, which were better than thyself. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder what Jehoshaphat's motive was separating every. Separating everybody from everybody. Did he know that the other boys were good? But God says the ones that he killed were much better than him. But he was the firstborn. Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people, all the people, with a plague. You know a nation right now is going through great plagues? All kinds of troubles and problems? And thy children and thy wives and all thy goods. Now verse 15 is important. And thou shalt have great sickness by disease of thy bowels. Alright, now I'm going to stop there in the comments. Because most medical doctors will tell you bowels is something that happens when you go potty. I'm going to show you where it's wrong. 
Matter of fact, didn't we just read about a king that said that the, the children from his own bowels? Well, last time I knew, children did not come from defecating to a toilet. I'm going to show you how severe this thing is. If you read this thing medically by doctors today, he had some kind of bowel movement trouble. And that's not so. Let's read what the Bible says. Let's get what the Bible says. Let's do what God says, and let's get the true story. This is not nothing with doo-doo. I'll show you how gross it is. I'll show you how serious when you sin against God. Now watch this. Unto thy bowels fall out by reason of sickness day by day. Now if you read that with the poo-poo, caca, whatever you want to call it, do you think, okay, you just... All right. He went to the bathroom too many times and dropped dead. No. That's not bowels. Bowels is what's inside you. Bowels is inside your gut area. And if it, like we said, where his children came from his balls, a certain other place. Don't you read in the book of Acts where it says that this, there was a king that was, that was eaten of worms? What happened here? It says that his balls fell out by reason of sickness day by day. His, in, his outside opened up and everything inside came out. That's the disease. Do you just picture this guy here? He lifts up his oh, put your shirt back down. What is gross? Now let me ask you a question. I don't know how much medical they knew back then, but if your intestines are hanging out, you know what I do? I had a little little infection of a toe. To me, that was little. I mean, the, the toe was rotten and stuff like that. It looked terrible. But that was a little thing compared to my balls coming out of me. I turned to God in prayer. I let the people in church say, pray for me. Tracy, you know, tell the people in church that they're, they're, they were talking about amputation of my toe. Never mind my foot. At least my toe. I'm, I need God's help here. This guy has got his insides coming out, and he doesn't turn to God. You see how serious this is? I mean, he scoops it back in or whatever. I'm not trying to be gross, but I'm trying to be gross. Yeah, okay, I can go on and still be. He's, he doesn't repent. You know how painful that is? His, in, his outsides open up, and it says that his bowels fall out by reason of sickness day by day. Every day his insides are coming out. And he does not get right. You know, you're in a day and age in America today when somebody's really, really sick. They keep going to the doctor. They keep paying all their money for the doctor. And doctors are not able to help. They have no idea. Couldn't you call this a, a kind of a, of a cancer? And yet, they're not turning to God. And how many preachers in a Baptist church have somebody in the congregation that God is doing something like this to them? Whatever reason. And they tell the preacher who really wants to help them. I'll just go see the doctor. I'm okay. I don't need no help. Yeah, go ahead and put me on the prayer list, but I'm okay. And they don't get right with God. They don't seek God see what if there's anything in their life going on. This is a very serious thing. This guy, uh, I'm trying to show you how serious this thing is, how gross is this thing, and I'm trying to show you in long words, he doesn't turn to God. Man, you get me with a little boo-boo and it hurts, I'm calling on God. I'm a sissy. And I know I need God. Now, I'll tell you, the hardest thing is, like with my dad's loss, I pray to the Lord that God take him down. I'd rather see my father suffer on this earth than suffer in hell. But how much will it take for some people to get right in the Lord? For some, they don't get the message. 
and they will never get the message. And you've got to learn that. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God died for everybody. But not everybody will get saved. There are people who will go to hell no matter how much you pray, how much you shed tears for them. No matter what God will do in their life, God is still faithful. They will still keep on going on with their life. Asa, who, we, who was mentioned, was diseased in his feet. And he, the Bible says he did not, re, did not go to God. And I can result with Asa. I was diseased in my feet twice and I sought God. Moreover, the Lord stood up against him, Joram, the spirit and the Philistines. All right, now he's got the disease here. Here comes the Philistines. This guy ain't got rest. He's sick. He, his body has been violated. Now here comes war. And he still hasn't turned to God. And the Arabians. Okay, here comes another battlefield. He's got two wars on. He's incurable disease right now. It's terminal. And still he has not cried unto God. And they were near to the Ethiopians. So the Ethiopians were, were also going against with help of the Arabians. Or the Ethiopians were hurting Arabia, helping the Arabians and he's still not getting right. Why did God send the Ethiopians? Because I believe it was, was Asa the one that conquered the Ethiopians. When he prayed, the guy said, God, help! Don't you think it, don't you remember Grandpa telling the story? Yeah, hey, I'm out there fighting our deep for out there. And I go, God, help! And God gave and took care of him for me. And Gerald's probably remembered the story of Grandpa. And I can do it my way. I don't need you, God. I've seen it. And they came up to, into Judah and break it into and break into it. They're in the city. And he still doesn't repent. And carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house. They walk into his house. And still he doesn't repent. What happened to his military? Why were they able to go into his house? Because God was against him. God wants him to do right. And still he doesn't pray. And he just keeps going on with his miserable life. You say God's involved with all this? Yes. He's doing whatever he can to get John back. And John don't come back. Not yet. No. And his sons also. They took his sons and he still doesn't pray to God and his wives he's sitting around in an empty kingdom now no family no nothing and he's sick and he still won't turn to God so that there was never a son left in, left him. He had no more children. Save Jehoshaphat, the youngest of his sons. One son who will probably sit on the kingdom after his father's death. Why is that boy left? Because of David. Not because of Jehoram. Because I promise that God made to David... Had God not made a covenant with David, don't you see, because of this king, Judah would have been wiped out, gone off the map. The United Nuts, the PLO, and all the Arabians, everybody over in the Middle East would be, yay, we got the land. And they'd be fighting each other for it. So, and after all this, The Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease. He already had his bowels. It was coming out every day. And God said, you don't want to get right. Okay. 
It's terminal. Die. I tried. I gave you all these things to get right. All you had to do is call on me like Grandpa Asa did. Called on me. You didn't listen to me. You didn't take heed to the troubles in my life. I was faithful. Die. And verse 18 is what we call today terminal illness. And Jehoram would call in uh, hospice rather than God. Aren't we there in America today? Isn't the church sick? Isn't she falling out? Isn't God sending things in amongst the church trying to say, listen, get right, get do this. Uh, you're going to keep on saying, I can do it. I'm rich, uh, Revelation says. I have no need of nothing, Revelation says. But God says you're miserable, you're poor, you're naked, not in that order. Something about eye slab because your eyes are, are makes you wonder what this disease if Jerome had to throw up. Like God says, you make me sick. And it came to pass that in the process of time, now get this, after the end of two years. In verse 18, two years later, his ball fell out by reason of his sickness, so that he died of a sore disease. That means plural. Two years, God, gave, God told him in verse 18, this is terminal, you're going to die. God gave him two more years to get right. Diseases, plural. And he still does not call upon God to get right. And his people made no burning for him like the burning of his fathers. Even the people knew. You know what? <laughs> Buddy, you're wrong. What if he had any Job's friends showed up to him? Thirty and two years was thirty and two years old. Thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. Forty years old. He dies at forty. I'm going to be forty-five. And he departed without being desired. No one wanted to have anything to do with him. Would you want to have anybody do anything with a guy who didn't want God? And here he has all this trouble. Would you want to have anything to do with a guy with this sickness? Probably disgusting. All his wives are gone. He never did get remarried. He only had one son left over. Yeah, but he wasn't living right, and nobody wanted to have anything to do with him. How be it, they buried him in the city of David. Okay, they buried him in the city of David, but not in the sepulchres of the kings. We're not going to bury him with the kings. He doesn't deserve to be with the kings. Don't you dare put his body there with the kings. And God tried and tried and tried. God's a merciful. He said, as we, as the adults are getting to the study of Job, Job is not, you know, why is this happening to me? Woe is me. It's what, what does God want me to know? What does God want me to learn? What attention is God trying to show me? Is it because I'm doing right? All they that live godly shall suffer persecution? Is it correction that I'm walking away I shouldn't walk? Or is it because of my own stupidity? I'll give you I'll give you I'll give you the illustrations. All three of them. Satan, you are doing right. 
And the Bible says that all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Satan wants to go after you. He wants to destroy you. You are a threat to Satan in his kingdom. You may try to go out and win others to Jesus Christ. You may teach Christians how to witness and how to do right and how to please God. That doesn't make Satan happy. You're going to end up with troubles and problems. Number two, if it's God. God may be doing it because you are his son and you're not doing right and you need a punishment. You need to be uh, the rod taken out. You need to be corrected. You need to be brought back the right way. Listen, the Bible says you're to correct the child with a rod. God, who is our father, is going to practice what's in his word. And when we do what we're not supposed to, our father's job is to correct us in love. You say, what's number three? Man. When man does something stupid, he's got to pay the penalty. Be not deceived, whatsoever man soweth that he shall also reap. You go cut off your arm. Well, what are you going to do? You ain't going to grow it back. You have to suffer. You're the stupid idiot that did it. And you can go with all kinds of diseases and troubles and problems that man makes for a decision. Troubles and problems happens to everybody. But you need to realize what is the attention. Joram's attention was he was not doing what God wanted him to do. Like I said, the devil could be after you because you are doing right. Or you, you could be causing your own trouble. Listen, if you have a, of a meal that you eat three day, three times a day at a convenience store, you have convenience store cooking like a guy I know. That's all he ate three times a day. He go to convenience store get their their meals, their hot dog, potato chips, and and all that. And the guy died with ninety six percent of his arteries were hardened. They said he had like a five cent five second heart attack in his sleep and died. He ate so much junk food, you can't blame God, you can't you can't blame Satan. So we close there.